Well, after a uh, nice long summer, I've been able to finally get back to the dump. Um, I decided to make it a series off of this just because of how large this dump is. So, um, you might have come from one of my other videos, and I was talking about what, uh, what bottle digging is in a dump. And you might be wondering, why in the world would you want to dig in a dump? That's kind of gross, isn't it? Well, this dump is from the late 1800s and the early 1900s, around that time. And back then, they threw away glass and iron and maybe other things that rusted. And nowadays, that stuff isn't considered trash. It's considered relics of the past. And if you're able to find them intact, it can be really nice and really collectible. And some of those only places to find them are in dumps like this. So uh, in this dump, I found probably over a hundred bottles, maybe or so, and just in like maybe six months times of coming here, maybe once a week. Um, and that's why I decided to start uh, recording it. If you're able to see all these rust and iron and glass sticking out of here, this is a sign that there's a dump here. I haven't actually dug in this location. Um, I'm more farther upstream. This age looks a little newer than what um, I'm digging in now, so I don't know if I'll ever get to this, but you can see there's some pottery and broken glass. I haven't seen any bottles sticking out. A while ago, I have found a, look, there's a little frog right there. <laughs> a while ago, I did find a, um, I forgot the name of it, but it was a type of water, water glass bottle, slick-sided. It was machine-made, but um, it was a nice bottle. But uh, yeah, I haven't ever found anything else here intact. And um, oh, do you see there's another lid to something? This spot used to be maybe three, three feet deep last year. Um, they were doing some construction up on the side and they ended up pushing a ton of dirt into the creek. Um, I was hoping it would wash out and I guess it did wash downstream. I just hope by over the dump, I don't have to dig like six feet to reach the actual bottles and again, Man, I was really hoping to see some glass washed up, but all the dirt would be covering it up if they were washed out. Looks a little better up here. But usually you're just crunching through some broken glass. See, this thing can trip you up. It's like an old battery. Almost looks like an old bottle. See the bricks too? That can kind of tell you the age. Broken bottles, broken glass, some bricks, broken bricks. That can tell you, uh, that there might be some good stuff in the area. Now, this is an interesting find. I wouldn't say it's old, but uh, huh. Main Street <laughs> records and tapes. No more trains to ride. Boxcar Willie. It's got a dent in it and crack though, so it's not really worth keeping. Now here's something that actually has washed out. See this bottle? It's like an old pickle jar or something. It's probably from like the 1920s. Um, it's not from an age that's at all um, profitable or collectible. You can see on it, um, there is something written on the bottom. You do want to look for embossings on glass, uh, especially machine made. If it's not embossed, it's just not worth keeping. But um, because that's embossed... Oh wait, here's something maybe. Oh wow, look at this. It's an ink. Now uh, here, I'll put a picture up of the inks that I found. Inks are like my favorite type of bottle because they're like, they're really a call to the age, like a time stamp of what they are because we don't obviously use inks anymore. So we use pens and um, pencils and ballpoint pens. But back then, they didn't have that. You know, they, were, they had to use inks like this to have on desks. So it really is like a, a time stamp. It shows exactly the age. It's not timeless anymore like other things. Um, I actually do have a bottle, or I don't have a bottle like this. I have this company. If you, I don't know if you're able to read it. I'll shine it up at the end and I'll put a picture up. But it says, uh, the Di uh, Diamond Ink Company, um, two ounce. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is great because this is like my favorite type of bottle to find. Sitting right on top, too. I thought it was broken glass. Um, hmm. It might be blown as well. So I'll talk about what blown is and I'll put some glass on top of the uh, like pictures of what I'm talking about so there's machine made bottles right machine made are later uh, in early 1900s and the seam of the neck will go all the way to the top like this picture that I'm showing you right now um, if it if it is blown which is older 
the seam will stop near the bottom of the neck. And those are, since they're older, they're more collectible. So it looks like it got another ink right here. Oh, I see it used to be broken glass. That's the problem of tumbling down the street, stream with all the rocks and such and broken gravel that can um, end up breaking some nice bottles. See here, broken blood wine. I found a few of those out of this dump. Hopefully I'll find some more to show you guys because those are some pretty cool bottles. But yeah, so there's machine made, seam goes to the top, blown where the, the, the seam stops near the top. And then there's some even older bottles which are pummeled glass. Um, and those are blown, blown from the bottom and then they're broken off. And so they have like a little broken glass at the base of it where it tunnels into itself basically. Those <laughs> sadly will not be in the stump because those are some really, really old glass. Those are from um, 1700s, even colonial times. And so those will be some nice bottles of fine. See here, the, if you ever see the rings on it, it means it's a newer bottle. But um, yeah, if I found some pommel glass here, I would be a happy man, but <laughs> not gonna find that here. So this is a little older of a section. Um, it's getting closer to the dump. So there's a potential for more bottles to have washed out. So I'll leave the camera on, but uh, yeah, you can see a lot of broken glass up here. That is a really good sign. Hopefully, since I haven't been here the whole summer, some bottles have washed up and exposed themselves and in, in intact, not broken like this one is. There's another frog. If you look down here, all this broken glass next to old medicine. There's a side to an old medicine bottle. You can tell they're medicine from their rectangular shape. And you know, when they're involved, they're obviously more profitable. Here's a bottle down here. This is an old snuff bottle. These were, um, you, you know, you snort it. This type of drug. Um, uh, tobacco, that's what it was. You snort it out of these uh, snuff bottles. They're collectible. Um, they're very, very common though. So I'll keep it just because it's one of the first bottles I found after that ink. Now this is something cool. It's broken, but I get to show you what I mean by embossing. So you see how the side of this, it's not just printed, it is textured, it's embossed. It's it like, um, it's protruding out a bit. And so those are the type of medicines, those are the type of bottles, even if they're machine made, that you would want. Can't really tell what it says. I'm not gonna try too hard because it's broken, but um, yeah, that's what embossing is. And those, those bottles can, if you find the right ones, they can go into the thousands of dollars. <laughs> oh, this is amazing, okay. Blood wine, remember that blood wine I was talking about, that broken piece? The front of it right here. If only the neck was still there. This would have been a blown bottle. So this seam right here would have disappeared as it went up into the neck. Really cool bottle. One of my favorite bottles I found in this dump. A lot of old broken glass up here. <sighs> you get a better chance of finding intact when you dig them up because there's um, less of a chance they're going to be broken. They wouldn't have tumbled down the creek. Here's a really nice bottle if it was intact. This is a Coca-Cola bottle. Um, it would have had a Coca-Cola at the bottom of it, near the base, and on the other side it would have said the town that it's from. So this is an interesting bottle. Um, they're not actually that good. Uh, I usually don't keep them if they're broken. But it's an interesting bottle because I find so many of them. They're machine made. And I only found once with a cork in it with still the liquid. It was like some sort of white liquid. So I don't know what they used it for. Could have been ink, could have been paints, could have been some sort of cosmetics. But I keep them because I feel like I could do something really cool with them. But uh, you see that guy? Look how huge he is. It's called a... Uh, like a graveyard cricket grasshopper or a cemetery grasshopper. Yeah, let me just show you the size of them. Come here, come here. See that thing? Huge. <laughs> yeah, it's called a graveyard grasshopper because uh, they're found in graveyards. <laughs> Not because there's some like voodoo stuff going about it. It's more like because there's a lot of grass and it's never cut. But um, yeah, I actually happen to be right next to a graveyard. So it's pretty, uh, pretty accurate to its name, but <laughs> Sadly, I'm not looking for grasshoppers. I want to find some intact bottles, not that. So, this is the start of the dump that I've actually started to dig in. Um, you can see where I've dug some. I was hoping some stuff had caved in while I was gone to make digging easier. 
or uh, uncovering bottles a little easier because it is in the 90 degrees today in the far south dug up in there too okay that looks pretty profitable i'll definitely go up under there let me check this one out first this is the first place that i went to when i started digging i decided to start scraping in the wall to see if there were any glass here and there was and so it told me there was a dump yeah i'm not gonna go too far up this because if i found some bottles that were broken i threw them up here oh see that this is a thing that i really would love to find in this dump some jugs i found so many broken pieces of them see there are a couple more right there haven't found anything intact that would have been a nice bottle too see all this up here isn't worth going through i threw it up here probably a year ago because they're all broken so in hindsight i probably should have just <laughs> got out and walked around and got back down see this is where they dumped the dirt originally which is really sad because, okay, I'm trying to get my shoe out of this. There we go. It's really sad because it's covering up the dump. <laughs> to dig down into the dump would take a lot of digging. I'll need a monsoon to come through here to wash this, wa this dirt out. We can see some glass being exposed around here. Again, I don't have my shovel, so I'm not going to dig any today. But here, I have a light, so let's see if you guys see anything. I won't, if I can get down that low. But in hindsight, when I look at the editing, <laughs> who knows, there might be a really nice bottle that you guys see that I don't. Yeah. Down here is where I probably dug the most bottles. Um, I was here with my brother and my dad, and so we were able to do a little more digging than just me by myself. But either way, I got a lot of bottles down from up here. But they dumped dirt up here as well. You see this place that's washed out down there? This is gonna be a pain. I got past it. And as you can see, there's a lot of glass up here. The thing is about here, to get to the bottles through digging, you have to dig through um, water. <laughs> All the bottles are below the water line. Or at least the old bottles are, the the, um, the blown ones. However, above the water line, I have seen some good bottles sticking out before, but I had to get like a, a foot under the water to pull bottles out of here. So, I see some glass sticking out right there. I might check that out. Get up in here. It might be an ink with how small it is. No, it's round. Well, I don't know. <laughs> nice ketchup bottle. <sighs> See, it's up high because uh, it's a newer bottle. Not as old. Big old grasshopper. Pretty cool. Just kind of creepy at the same time if you don't like bugs. You got a lot of legs. <laughs> Come here. Look at him. He's so cool. All right. Let you go. All right. So that's the end of this trip. Here, I just found three bottles. Like I said, I wasn't digging. It's the, uh, might be better in the shade. There you go. It's the Diamond Ink Company. It's got a lot embossed in the bottom as well. If you look at the sides, see if I can find it. It's hard to find these seams sometimes when they're wet. So, here we go. There's a seam going up the side right there and it disappears as it goes up into the neck. That means this is a blown ink bottle. Late 1800s, early 1900s, really good bottle, really nice ink, not a chip in it, which is amazing because as you saw where it was, this had tumbled down the stream from where the dump actually was. Really good bottle. Just a comma snuff bottle. See that seam goes up to the top. Machine made, nothing on it. Just a nice little window bottle. And then of course this whole paint thing. I still don't know what they held. Only good because I feel like I might do a project with them. Not good for collectible purposes. They're all machine made, so. Alright, so next time I'll be digging into stump. I will not be walking down the creek. I only walk down the creek after a really hard rain or if I haven't done it in a while. But uh, digging will be just as many bottles, probably more bottles. Um, I'll definitely do some time lapses in it. If you want to check out some of my other videos, 
that do not involve the bottle digging. I also do some dumpster diving videos for some game stores, and also do some urban exploration videos for some abandoned places. Um, most common video is going to be the dumpster diving, uh, just because it's easier to access. Next will be bottle digging, or a bottle walking down the creek. Lastly, the least common will be the urban exploration, just because abandoned places will be hard to find. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time.